It is time to check out my everyday carry setup for January of 2023. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today we're talking about EDC. I read all of the comments on that previous video and you guys said by a landslide that going into this new year, you want to see a lot of everyday carry content. So gear reviews and pocket knives and flashlights and things of that nature. So this one is not going to be super exciting because as you guys know, I haven't done a whole lot of EDC videos last year because it hasn't changed a whole lot, but I'm gonna make some changes to that going into this year and I'm gonna try out different gear. I'm gonna test a lot of new things and I'm gonna bring you guys some videos on it. So to kick this off, I'm gonna show you guys what I have in my pockets right now in January of 2023. First things first, the main three phone wallet keys. I cannot leave the house without those things. So we'll run through this one pretty quickly because it hasn't changed a whole lot. Right here I have my trusty old iPhone 13 Pro Max. This phone is a little bit big for me. I kinda wish I would've got the smaller one and whenever this one dies on me and I go to upgrade, I will probably opt for the smaller version of this phone because I like to keep things a little bit more minimal now. I have this thing in an Apple case. I have a screen protector that's all cracked up on there and then also a MagSafe pop socket just to make holding my phone a little bit easier. Now to go along with the phone, a few people have seen this in some of my videos and were curious about it. So right here on my wrist is the Apple Watch Ultra. Now I'm not a huge watch guy. There is one watch that is very high on my list but it is very expensive so I will not be investing in that anytime soon. However, I do like having something on my wrist to check things other than just the times. So after checking out my friend Mike's watch, I decided, hey, maybe it's time to get back into Apple watches. This is really one of the only watches that I wore in the past. And the reason that I like this thing now is because of the improved battery life. I can wear this thing about three, maybe four days straight without charging it. And that was a big downfall of the previous one. So I like this thing a lot. I have this watch face set up with a date and time, my activity levels on there, as well as a stopwatch. My favorite thing down in the left-hand corner is my elevation, so I can click on that and get directions. And when we are out in the mountains, I am constantly checking out my elevation. I then have the battery life of the watch as well as the daily high and low temperature. Now, one of the newer features of the Ultra is that it has sort of like a hotkey selection. So if I tap on this button right here, Turns on a flashlight, which doesn't seem like much right now, but in a pinch, like when we're sleeping in here at night and I just wanna see something to grab it and I don't wanna wake everyone up, I can tap that to turn it on and it's all programmable. You can customize these things however you want. I do have this thing on just the regular Apple trail band, which is getting kind of dirty. I've been wearing this thing quite a lot and I like it. Now moving on to the keys, this one is very simple. It's just my Tacoma key in a Miso Customs case. I do have that attach my belt loop at all times with my Travax Talon. This is kind of like an exclusive version. This one sort of has like a black finish on it. As of right now, when I'm filming this video, these are in stock, at least some of the color variants. So if you guys wanna check that out, I will of course leave links to everything that I'm talking about here in the description down below. Keys, nice and simple. Now for the wallet, my all-time go-to favorite wallet, the Travax Contour. I've tested a lot of wallets and I always go back to this one. And for EDC video sakes, I wanna bring you guys some more gear videos. I'm probably going to be swapping this out here like right after this video. I wanna test out some new gear and get those thoughts under my belt. That way I can bring you guys some more of these, maybe like a video a month. It's probably not going to truly be an everyday carry video, but it'll just sort of be like a pocket dump. Here's what I'm carrying today. So in this wallet, I have three cards for money, two cards for identification, and then in the back, I do have a little bit of cash on me right now, which is kind of rare. This bottle opener gets used quite a lot as I'm traveling around, and it's nice to always have it on there. So that is my phone, my wallet, and my keys. Now let's get into the sort of extra stuff and the tools that I like to carry pretty much every single day. Now for my blade, you guys probably know that I have been on a fixed blade kick as of recently for the past like year and a half, almost two years now. So this is one that I just made with my buddy Ryan at Two Feathers Productions and I did a full video on this blade right here. This is what we are calling the warning. So this is a new blade that I designed and Ryan and I both made them and he basically showed me the way so I was able to make this thing entirely myself, which is super cool. It just feels better knowing that I had a large portion of making this thing come to life. 
So you guys can go check out that video. I don't have a lot to report back on this thing yet, but it is still razor sharp with that micro bevel on there. The jimping still feels great. The micarta is starting to get a little bit of wear on it, so it's kind of darkening up. And I love this thing, especially with the new sheath design. This thing fits in here nice and snug, and then the ulti clip is now perfectly centered with the actual knife, so Whenever I'm wearing pants like I am right now, the off the grid trailblazers, they have like a 45 degree pocket over here. I snap it into place and that thing does not move at all. When I am not wearing pants that have that extra pocket, I typically ride it up in my front pocket with my cell phone, which can be a little bit cramped and like clustered up in my front pocket, but I've done it for a while now, so I'm pretty used to it. Now, one of the newest additions to my everyday carry is actually a multi-tool. I find myself carrying multi-tools more and more often nowadays because I'm constantly traveling around and having a little bit of tools in your pocket goes a long way, especially when you're trying to repair stuff on a vehicle or just like some household items. So this right here is a Christmas gift that I just got and I've been wanting to test this thing out. This is the Leatherman Signal. What really drew me to this multi-tool is how Leatherman kind of markets it. They claim that it is an outdoor camping survival multi-tool. And I do kind of agree with that because of some of the extra tools on here. But for me, it kind of blurs the line between just like a overall everyday carry multi-tool that you can use in urban environments and like automotive applications as well. And then you mix that with some of the camping tools on here. And it seems like this multi-tool was really built for me because blurring those two worlds is basically exactly how I'm living my life nowadays. So on the outside of the multi-tool, we do have a really nice knife. One thing to note is that this is the thickest blade that Leatherman has ever put on one of their tools. It is serrated as well, which is great for a camping application, and this thing is super sharp as of right now. A lot of times I find myself reaching for this blade because it's like right where a traditional pocket knife would be, so I'm kind of used to that. It does have a lock on there. So although I am carrying a proper fixed blade, which is good for basically everything, I find myself using this just out of like a habit. The other tool on the outside of this multi-tool is of course the Leatherman saw. I don't know if you guys have ever used these yourself, but they rip through material. This little thing is small but mighty. It also does lock into place and I haven't had to use that yet, but I'm gonna be testing this thing a lot more as I'm out camping over the next couple of weeks. Now the signal does come with a pocket clip, which is great. A lot of the multi-tools that I've carried in the past, I've actually had to add one to it. So it's nice to see that they intend this thing to be riding in your front pocket. Now on the bottom side of this multi-tool, you'll find some knurling here, and this is actually useful as a hammer, which is super nice because I've hammered nails and different things with pocket knives that I carry all the time. Really not supposed to do that. So having just a little bit of like a striking plate there, goes a long way. I've already used this and it works great. There's also a cutout for a quarter inch drive on there if you are carrying extra bits and then of course a carabiner with a bottle opener in there. This multi-tool does have a lock too so if you are using that carabiner you can pop that lock into place and then the tool will not open if you have it like hanging on a backpack or just hanging on your belt loop. Now there's actually one more tool that you can access from the outside here. If I press this lock for the tools that are on the inside this little knife sharpener pops off. Now, since this is sort of like a camping survival type of multi-tool, this thing is not gonna be great for sharpening like knives every single day, but it will get you by in a pinch if you just need to touch up your edge while you're at a campsite. And it is curved as well, which is good for the serrations on the blade. To put that thing back into place, you simply put it over the stud, push down the lock and then slide it forward. And that thing is not going anywhere. Now to the inside of this tool, we do have the traditional Leatherman pliers on here, wire cutter, wire stripper. The blades on this guy are replaceable which I've never had to do but it's nice that they give you that functionality. Now on the hammer side of this multi-tool if you pull back this little clip here you can actually pop out the other wilderness survival tool. This is actually a whistle. Pretty dang loud. It's great for survival situations if you get stuck in a tree well while you're skiing and you need help. If you got this thing in your pocket you can blow this whistle a lot longer than you can yell for help. On the back side of that is also a ferro rod which you can strike with the back of one of these tools and start a fire in a pinch. Now there's a lot of really good reviews of this tool out there on the market already and I've heard that this rod is a little bit soft so it's not gonna be a rod that you practice with because you will wear through it pretty quickly. I have not used it yet but in the future for testing's sake I might try to start a fire with that just to see how it works. 
Now, last but not least, on the other side of this tool, we of course have a bit driver, both Phillips and slotted. We also have a can opener, which a lot of people don't find very useful. However, I use can openers quite a lot while I'm camping. And then of course we have an awl here, which is sort of like multi-purpose. You can do a lot of things with that awl. And that is all of the tools on the Leatherman Signal. This of course is not like a full review of this thing. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of good videos out there on the signal already, but so far I'm really liking this thing. And this is actually replacing my Skeletool. I was carrying the Skeletool for a couple months and now that I got this for Christmas, it has taken that spot. So that is all of the gear that I carry in my pockets almost every single day, even when I am not leaving the house. However, when I am leaving the house and I'm going somewhere like maybe into a city, then of course we have some more protection and I know you guys would definitely want to hear about this. So let's just get it out of the way. My everyday carry, which is technically not every day because I don't leave the house very often, but when I do, typically I will have my TS-43X with me. This is riding in an associate V2 holster from my buddy Mike. And I am still running the Shield Arms 15 round mags with this. The TS-43X, if you guys have never seen this before, you can find some videos of it over on the Sunday Gunday channel. This thing was designed by myself and then brought to life by the guys at Danger Close Armament. I've done full videos on this thing, and this is something that is probably never gonna change for my EDC for quite a long time. The Holosun 507K on top has been working great. I still have not changed my batteries, and this thing has been running for over a year now, I believe. So I absolutely love this thing. It is super comfortable in these holsters from LLOD and that is one of the things that comes with me almost everywhere. So that is all that I had for this EDC update. Like I mentioned early on, not a whole lot has changed, but going forward, right when I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna pull out some old gear, maybe pull out some new gear that you guys haven't seen before. And I'm gonna bring you some EDC pocket dump style related videos here in the future. Maybe one a month. If you guys like this video and leave a comment, let me know what type of pocket dump EDC stuff you guys wanna see. And let's say we get 2000 likes and I will make another EDC pocket dump style video. So that is all that I had for today. If you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.